pressure casting with TC804 casting resin. In today's tutorial, we're going to go over the tips for pressure casting and getting good, high quality, detailed casts using TC804 cast under pressure in a silicone mold. Now, anytime you've got a piece like this that's high detailed, little figurines like our little pensive Mothman here, uh, anytime you're working with a piece like this, Pressure casting is ideal because this ensures that you get the resin into all those little details. So what we're doing is basically just using about 40 to 60 PSI to eliminate the, the, the existence of air bubbles in that pressure environment. Now, one of the important attributes about the TC804 is the long working time. This has a working time of about seven to eight minutes at room temperature. And this is also a really tough impact resistant resin that doesn't crack or shatter and it's also still a very hard resin this cures to about a 75 d now first thing we need to do we're casting this in a silicone mold but remember since we're going to be painting this finished little pensive mothman we want to make sure we don't have any release residue so you want to make sure you're using a good high grade silicone and if you do use mold release make sure you have a plan for how to remove that later on in this case, we're not going to be using any mold release, but we are going to dust the inside of the mold with baby powder. Now, the reason for that is the baby powder, we're just gonna blow out the excess with an air hose and the residue that sticks to the silicone mold will transfer to our resin cast and give us a nice matte surface that's easy to paint. Now, once we've got our resin mixed up, we're ready to mix that and pour. Now, Couple of different schools of thought. There are some who would are inclined to degas this resin at this point, and there's nothing wrong with that. That is one extra step of precaution against uh, air bubbles. By removing, by vacuum degassing it, you're removing that much more of the air before you even subject this to the pressure environment. But because this is a pretty low viscosity resin, we're just going to go ahead and get this mixed up thoroughly. And remember that if you're working in a high humidity area, uh, places like Florida, Houston, uh, New Orleans, any place with high humidity, it's always a good idea to mix your resin with a stainless steel spatula instead of a wooden stir stick. Wooden stir sticks can sometimes absorb humidity out of the air and transfer that to your resin. Now we're ready to pour our resin into our silicone mold. And you'll notice that I'm tipping that resin a little bit, make sure that I burp any of the big air bubbles out of it. Pressure can't eliminate large voids, but it will force those other bubbles into solution and they will mix with the surrounding resin. Now, once we've got everything ready to go in our mold, we put that into our pressure vessel and you can configure your pressure chamber like we did here where it's upright on the floor and you can also mount it at a at sideways so you're reaching into it like an oven. Both approaches work fine. The main thing is you want to make sure it's secure so there's not a risk of it falling over and rupturing because you're using high pressure and that can be dangerous. So just a, a quick safety aside here, make sure that you are working safely and within the parameters of whatever pressure vessel that you have purchased. Now, once we've got everything situated, we've got the top secured on our pressure chamber, ready to turn up the pressure. And we're going to pressurize this chamber to around 40 to 50 PSI. Make sure your air compressor has a large tank, like a 20 to 30 gallon tank. If you're working with a, an air compressor with a small tank, it will take a long time to fill up your pressure chamber and bring it up to the pressure that you want. And the longer that takes, the more risk you have of your resin setting before it's fully pressurized. Now, once we've hit that point of that 40 to 60 PSI area, we wanna make sure that the pressure stays that way throughout the duration of the gel time of the casting resin. Remember that if we take that pressure away while the resin is still liquid, those bubbles will pop right back. So make sure you maintain that pressure throughout the working time and the gel time of the resin. And it's always a good idea to keep whatever's left over in your mixing cup nearby and use that to gauge what's happening inside your pressure chamber. Now, once our resin has set up, we're ready to remove our air hose and bleed off the pressure on our pressure chamber. Really important step. The last thing you wanna do is open this up and have a possibly fatal encounter with high pressure. 
So again, make sure you understand what you're doing when you're doing pressure casting. Make sure you understand the equipment and you follow all of the manufacturer directions for working with both your compressor as well as your pressure chamber. And now ready to demold our part. And you see we just secured our mold here with just some electrical tape so it's easy to remove and demold and you see we have a really nice clean mothman part and because of that baby powder on the inside of the mold we now have a part that's ready to take primer or paint or whatever but we have that very nice matte surface ready to paint and because we have a really nice clean silicone mold it takes a very little bit of uh, cleanup to remove the seams and now we have a little pensive Mothman ready for paint. And to paint this, I typically use a uh, automotive primer with uh, standard like Liquitex acrylics. So there you have the process of casting TC-804 casting resin under pressure to get bubble-free figurines and other parts. And it's just very important, I cannot stress this enough, make sure when you're casting under pressure that you do so safely and you follow all the directions on both the air compressor that you're using as well as the pressure chamber. And make sure that you do everything as safely as possible and of course always work in a ventilated area. And as usual, make sure if you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe and check the video description for links to the products we're using here. Both the silicone as well as the casting resin we're using here will be linked in the video description. And as always, all of our products are available on our website at brickintheyard.com.